Welcome to Commercialization, Moving Ideas from Lab to Market. When thinking of commercialization, researchers and scientists often focus on addressing technology hurdles, since that is what we are trained to do. But there are so many other non-technical challenges to address in order to commercialize an idea. This series of bite-sized videos will explain what those risks are and introduce a new framework to ensure all commercialization risks are considered, not just technology ones. This framework is the Adoption Readiness Level and was developed here at the U.S. Department of Energy by the Office of Technology Transitions, or OTT. We at OTT will be your guide in this video. Given the abundance of acronyms in the world, particularly within the federal government, just remember us as the otters if it helps. Sam the otter, who is small and mighty, is our official mascot. At OTT, our mission is to drive private sector uptake of innovative technologies. This is a fancy way of saying that we are moving technologies out of the research lab and into the broader market where they can have real impact. In this introductory video, we cover one, what is commercialization? Two, how do we think about non-technical barriers preventing market adoption? And three, what will be covered in the rest of the video series? New technologies start at the lab bench, but to have an impact in the real world, they must develop into products that can be accepted and sold on the market. That's what commercialization is. Here at the Department of Energy, we run 17 of our nation's most important national labs. These are world-class facilities where dedicated researchers, scientists, and entrepreneurs work on critical technologies for our planet. The impact of our national labs can be seen every day with technologies born from our labs that have successfully navigated the commercialization continuum to improve our daily lives. One example is a 3D holographic scanner developed by PNNL which has been commercialized to enable improved airport security. Another example is LBNL's technology to address arsenic contamination in water, a technology that was then licensed and sold to a company. And another is lead-free solder that was developed by Ames and is used in every single electronic device in the world. It is important to define what is commercialization. We don't do R&D and then commercialize. Commercialization starts with research and development, but then must move through demonstration deployment. To commercialize a technology means to shepherd it across the research, development, demonstration, and deployment, or RDD&D continuum. We start with the research phase where we explore a concept or idea. This typically is tested through lab scale experiments to show the potential of the technology to address an issue in the real world. This is also known as a technology's value proposition. In other words, the benefit or service that this technology can provide. Once we see that the concept has technological potential, we then move to the development phase where we design and build a proof of concept or working prototype to see if this technology can function in the way that we imagined. At this stage, lab and bench scale experiments are done to help validate the value proposition and to see if it could behave in the real world. From there, we move to demonstration, where we create a pre-commercial pilot scale system with most functionality in place. This real-world installation is tested to validate the value proposition, de-risk the technology, especially its economic viability. For something to make it out of the demonstration phase to deployment, the pilot must show that it can work in real-world conditions, and most importantly, there is a pathway to operate the system at a reasonable cost, so that ultimately we can sell it at a price that consumers are willing to pay for it and a profit can still be made. And finally, deployment, where we have a fully functional and scalable system that is cost competitive. All the costs and risks have been resolved, resulting in a sustainable business model ready for scaling by the private sector. Now, it would be great if RDD&D was a linear process, but it's more like a game of shoots and ladders. You might learn something or identify a risk in the demonstration phase, which sends you back to the research phase. This doubling back between stages as you move through the RDD&D continuum is part of commercialization. The key is being flexible and identifying issues as soon as possible so you can move through RDD&D as quickly and as efficiently as possible. There are many pitfalls along the continuum and it's important to know what to look out for and assess. However, most technology-based organizations use a stage gate process that only focuses on technology risk, and in many cases, the process uses TRLs or technology readiness levels. 
NASA developed TRLs in the 1970s to navigate technical risks, but there are many market risks that technology must navigate to fully reach commercial deployment, and these are not captured in the TRL framework. So in addition to understanding your technology readiness, you also need to think about external market and adoption risks. That is why we at OTT developed Adoption Readiness Levels, or ARLs, to complement TRLs. Commercializing your technology, whether it's a consumer product, a power generation technology, a medical device, industrial equipment, or anything else, requires working with companies, customers, and at times policymakers to transform your technology into a sellable product. And these players are concerned with market risks just as much as technical risks. ARLs assess the external factors that can impact your technology rather than features intrinsic to the technology itself. The ARL framework was built using DOE's extensive commercialization experience and vetted with input from external industry partners. Adoption readiness levels can assist you in assessing the economic and other market-based risks. You need to navigate both technical risks using TRLs and adoption risks using ARLs. If you do that, then you are well prepared to handle all the potential roadblocks your technology will encounter to achieve wide-scale market adoption. The ARL framework goes beyond the traditional technology readiness levels to capture adoption risks that can impact the successful deployment of the technology. It consists of 17 inventions that fall into four risk buckets, value proposition, market acceptance, resource maturity, and license to operate. Knowing what these risks are can help you take actions to mitigate as many of them as possible. The lower the adoption risks, the higher the adoption readiness level, and the closer your technology is to getting to the market. You may be thinking, how do you measure a technology's ARL? Well, we create a qualitative assessment tool called Carrot. No, not that kind of Carrot, something more like this. The Commercial Adoption Readiness Assessment Tool, or Carrot, lays out what it means to be low risk, medium risk, or high risk for each ARL dimension. Once you've assessed the adoption risk for all 17 dimensions, you use this table to total the number of medium and high risks that you've identified in your carrot assessment to receive an actual ARL score. The ARL score is used to show how ready your technology is for the market. It only takes scoring medium or high in a few risk dimensions for the ARL score to drop from a nine to a six. The reason why is that investors and other members of the private sector can handle a few speed bumps for a technology solution, but more than two or three risks makes it hard for them to get their heads around, meaning the likelihood of their supporting commercial liftoff plummets. In fact, it's often not technology barriers that impede commercialization, rather challenges like high prices to the end user or unestablished manufacturing supply chains that are the stumbling blocks. But you shouldn't be discouraged if your technology falls in the high risk, low ARL category. This just means you have identified key barriers that must be addressed. Knowing how your idea fits into the market landscape can help you prepare and address these risks to get further along the path to commercialization. The power of ARLs is not in the exact answer, but in raising your awareness of how your product currently fits into the market so you can begin to address risk areas beyond TRLs. The goal for this series is that you understand what it takes to commercialize your technologies, how to identify market risks, and to give you the language to talk to external stakeholders about your solution. In the next videos, we'll explore the ARL framework in more depth. And by the end of this series, you'll be an ARL.